Hi, I'm Katie, and I'm one of our um, communications coordinators and social media coordinators for the Center for Celiac Research and Treatment. And I'm going to be talking with Martha, our nurse practitioner, about some ways to make sure that you can keep your gluten-free holiday party safe for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> so the first question we have for Martha is, um, if you are a celiac and gluten-free guest coming to my holiday party and I'm hosting, does all the food need to be gluten-free? No. Um, you can have um, separate dishes and it would be very helpful to label the dishes that are gluten-free and perhaps even put them on a different um, table. So you could do like a little card table of some gluten-free foods so that they're not um, mixed up because you don't want to interchange the utensils you're using to serve those gluten-free foods. But gluten-free foods that are naturally gluten-free at the Thanksgiving table are mashed potatoes and your butternut squash. Um, you can put the marshmallows on top of the butternut squash um, and the um, sweet potatoes, but just make sure, again, that you read the back of the label to make sure that they are gluten-free. Um, so no, we can combine both. And green both. beans. You said and green beans, beans right. but without the little crumbled onions on top. Right. Um, so if you're the host and you're serving glutinous and gluten-free foods at your holiday party, um, what are some tips to make sure that all the gluten-free foods stay separate and safe? Again, like either having a separate table or perhaps putting the uh, stuffings, if you have two different stuffings, a gluten-free stuffing and a regular um, containing, gluten-containing stuffing, making sure they're maybe at the opposite ends of the table. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like to use the place cards um, and just maybe in you know a red ink, make all the gluten-free foods, you can label them gluten-free, but they're all in the red inks, so that's not confusing to people. And again, making sure you have separate utensils so that people aren't cross-contaminating. Yeah, and that kind of goes along with the question, um, what order should you prepare the glutinous and gluten-free dishes in? Should you prepare all the gluten-free dishes first, or? I think it's helpful if you can prepare all the gluten-free foods first, and then you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, should I clean that counter well enough, or did I mix some flour in, uh, gluten flour in with my gluten-free you know, foods? So if you mix everything, probably prepare everything first that is gluten-free, and then you're pretty, um, can be a little more safer. But you right. can, just, as long as you wash all your utensils and your pots and pans, it's okay to use the same pots and pans mm -hmm. and the same utensils as long as they're cleaned in between making the gluten-containing foods and the gluten-free foods. Right, and just really hot water and soap is okay for that? Yes, yes. You can put in your dishwasher, that's mm -hmm. possible. Yeah. Just perfectly. Right. So before you host a gluten-free guest at your holiday party, do you recommend learning about celiac at all or doing any type of research into celiac disease? So I think it's really helpful if you talk to the person who's actually has celiac disease or a gluten intolerance that's coming to your holiday party and kind of get some suggestions from her as to what she likes or um, how you can prepare some of the foods or maybe she has some great recipes that she could share with you that is gluten free. Um, you can also go to nationalceliac.org um, and that's a nice website to just kind of, if you're trying to look into what does it mean to be gluten-free, because some people may not understand what gluten-free means and where you can find gluten in foods. So I think those are um, helpful. But I think talking to the person and being really upfront and saying, hey, listen, I know you're coming for dinner and you need a gluten-free diet, you know, you're eating a gluten-free diet, what can I do to help it make it easy and right. So if you are the host and you're kind of struggling to put together a menu, you do recommend going right back to the person and just yeah, kind of asking for help. Yeah, and I think just being really upfront and asking for suggestions and you know, there's so many gluten-free foods out there that come pre-prepared, so it's a, a little bit easier for the hostess. And we have some examples of some here in the front. I know at Market Basket, Whole Foods, Stop and Shop, all those um, now have gluten-free stuffing. Um, so there's some easy ways, so it's not so like, oh my gosh, I have to go out and buy gluten-free flour and then make everything fresh and homemade. You don't have to. You have a lot of prepared foods that are gluten-free now. It makes it a little easier. Right. So which um, dishes do you think you should watch out for when planning a gluten-free menu? Are there any um, dishes that you know people don't realize have gluten as items? Sure. Yeah. So, so we always think of our green bean casserole that has mm -hmm. the crunchy onions on top. Of course, those are coated in um, you know in wheat and bread. Um, and then stuffing your turkey. I think people forget that when you stuff your turkey with regular gluten-free. I mean, gluten-containing stuffing, you've now contaminated the turkey. So if you're having a person who's coming that's on a gluten-free diet, whether it be for whatever dietary reason, that maybe you um, do not stuff the turkey with stuffing and you make two separate stuffings. Um, that way you're not cross-contaminating. Of course, the gravy has flour in it. So again, you know, people forget about the gravy um, being containing gluten. 
And then also with going back to your green bean casserole, Campbell's soup, if you use that soup, um, actually has um, gluten in it. So when you're making your green bean casserole, not only the crunchy part on top, but also the actual soup that you put in. And there are some gluten-free, like cream of mushrooms and um, soup that you can use. I know I found it at Whole Foods, um, a gluten-free um, soup to add for the green bean casserole. Perfect, thank you. So, you know, going from hosting to if you're the person attending this holiday party with celiac or gluten sensitivity, um, how do you talk to the host about your dietary needs before you go? So, I mean, if you feel comfortable enough, you know, obviously if it's a family member, you can talk to them beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a, a going to someone's house that you really don't know the person that well, maybe you could make sure that you've really had something good to eat before you uh, go to the actual um Thanksgiving celebration that way you're not starving when you get there and so if you say oh my gosh there's not many foods that I can eat here at least you had something to eat prior to going and then bringing something you know offering to bring like a dessert that everyone can share so it's a gluten-free item and you're not just bringing your own little food you're actually bringing something that can be shared with everyone but you know that it's gluten-free. So if I'm the person that has celiac or non-celiac gluten sensitivity and I'm going to a holiday party um, and I'm looking around and one of the dishes looks really good but I'm not sure if it's safe for me to eat, is it okay to ask the host? Yes, oh yeah, absolutely. But you know, pull her aside and just say, hey, listen, I have this intolerance or sensitivity mm -hmm. or I, um, that I cannot eat anything that contains um, wheat or barley or rye or anything that has gluten in it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, just ask her how she prepared it because again, when we talked about the Campbell's soup, people forget about that in the green bean casserole or things that, or croutons on a salad. We forget, oh my gosh, I put the croutons on the salad and now that's cross-contaminated the salad. Um, but as the hostess too, if you know that you're gonna have somebody coming to the house, of course, that has a gluten um, intolerance or sensitivity, you can also keep the boxes that you prepared the food. Let's say you used a box stuffing that said gluten-free on it. It's nice just to keep those boxes so that the person can be reassured that yes, this is really gluten-free and here's the box, you can look at it and it's safe to eat. Um, right. And then of course, when you before, if you do have this um, intolerance or sensitivity, before you go to the party, have something to eat so you're filled up so that you're not ravenous and starving when you get there and then you look around there's nothing for you to eat and you're like oh no I'm so hungry I have to eat something um, and, and then that way you're not putting the hostess at, in a, too like awkward. feeling unawkward or anything mm -hmm. like that and then bring, offering to bring something that you know is gluten free that everyone can share and eat like a dessert or a side dish and that way you have something to eat that you know is gluten free but you're sharing it with everyone and you're not just saying this is my food over here and you know and keeping separate, yeah. you're really joining in with the celebration. That's a really good idea. Well, thank you very much, Martha. Okay. Happy, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.